Hello and welcome to the Amateur Football Podcast. Hope everyone is well. Let me just say, I, I've got someone here that deserves a hat-trick ball because this is the third time that you've been on the platform, right? <laughs> Where's my ball, like, bro? <laughs> <laughs> it's all it's all good talking about where is it? Wait, I don't see nothing. Oh dear, dear. no, no. But you know, um, I've got Reese Jackson here, man. What's going on, sir? I'm good, man. You know what? It's a uh, it's good to link up with you again. Um, and yeah, we'll we'll get into that of of how we of how we connected and stuff, man. Yeah. So thank you for having me on again. Like we said, third time. But um, yeah, just I'll send my address to send my ball, send my ball. There. It can go in my it can go in my shed with my FA Cup. Match. <laughs> So um, I'm gonna kind of ask you. I don't know. I mean, like it could be a, like a bit of a sticky question. Would you prefer to score three goals in a World Cup, but then your career is finished, yeah? or would you rather be someone of influence within the creative field and have a long and prosperous career again, for, like financially sorted out? And why? The World Cup's mad, you know. That world, that's a mad one. Do you know why? Because first of all, that's for your country. Yeah. It's every four years. And going to the World Cup is is um I think that's like the, the that's the top of the top. Do you know what I mean? Mm. But um the, I mean the other option I'm all about, that's what I'm about, is is about um creating and, and and helping and and blah 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 but i don't know i think the i think the world cup serious i think the world cup you know a hat trick it's a good feeling when you score a hat trick by the way but then you, you i mean you won't know that <laughs> um but, no, but the, I, I haven't scored many hat tricks um because i've never been that type of player I'm, I'm i'm more of a um i'm more of an assist guy i get a buzz out of assisting mm. You know, if I'm one on one with a keeper and I can score, I'm telling you, I'm probably going to square it. I can't lie. <laughs> um, but that 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 feeling of a hat trick is 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 a nice feeling, man. And that, I've got that feeling of of scoring a, a hat trick in the FA Cup. That I, I always talk about. I don't care. Even you know, I was in the shed the other day, <laughs> cleaning my boots out, and m my son was like, "Dad, like, can I play with that ball?" I'm like, "You ain't touching that ball. No <laughs> way. D that's a special ball there. You know what I mean?" Um, but yeah, I think I think the World Cup. Yeah. I think the World Cup. But like you are a very creative guy, like you know I know. Like you like know exactly strategically what you're doing with this kind of creative industry. Like that also excites you. Do you know what it is? It's cause it's because I'm having a feel of it already. Do you know what I mean? Because I'm having a feel of it already and, and I love doing what, I, what I'm doing, but because I haven't had a feel of playing at the top elite mm. and, you know, obviously we've seen it in the World Cup and what it must and what it must be like to score a hat-trick, I always say to myself, I wish that was me, man. Do you know what I mean? I think that's why I'm edging towards it a bit more. Okay. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, that's a tough, that's a good question, man. Mm, mm, mm. If I could have a feel of both of them, if you can allow me to have a feel <laughs> of both. But I, I, I'm, I'm edging more towards the... Um, the World Cup, man. Fair dues, fair dues. And you you mentioned it at the beginning in terms of talking about how we how we're here. Yeah. Like our kind of connection. And um so yeah, I think it was through lockdown. It was twenty twenty twenty. Was it twenty twenty? That's when we yeah, when they yeah. Was it That's when they first put us in prison, yeah, and it? They locked us up. <laughs> 2020, yeah. yeah. Uh, no one likes the number 20 no more. Nah, ain't it? You know what I'm saying? Like that. You know what? I even even, even when I was putting on a shirt yesterday for for at football and the 20 shirt, I'm like, I ain't touching that number, bro. You know what? Like that like, year, I can't even remember really what happened in that year apart from COVID. A lot of it was a blur. It was, honestly, it would have been. It would have been, bro. We was pff, look. A man can talk forever about COVID days, but we was just mentally brainwashed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and um. I still think to this day now, a lot of people will probably sit there and go, what the hell even happened? Um, I don't remember a lot, but I'm a person that takes a lot of pictures and videos. And sometimes I'm looking back through, I'm like, Bloody hell, did, was that, did I look like that? Was we doing this? But, rah. So um, yeah, it was around them times. Yeah. Around them times, definitely. And um, I was doing, because I was, I was thinking to myself, I'm thinking, how am I going to fill in a time with the platform? Like, What's like something that I would always like to do, which I probably 
didn't have time to do. And it was analyze football games. Mm. So of course, like that was inspired to win the Croydon League. And you guys were playing Sandersted, you know, of course, like I've kind of got um, um like a few friends at Sandersted. So I thought, okay, you know, I remember this game because it was a mad game. And then I was re- reviewing the game, da da da. And every, and again, like, I didn't know you at the time. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, God's on the truth, like, I didn't know who, like, mm-hmm. I didn't know anything. But then every time you, like, you, like, got the ball, you know what I'm saying? There was a bit of swag. And then, like, it looked like the game would just, like, calm down to your speed. And I compared you to Litmanen. I'm like... Yeah, yeah. Probably, I, I, that doesn't really sit well with me, you know, big man. I know you're showing your age and... I know. You know but, but of all people, it could have been, like, Rooney or someone like that. When he said it was going so well, that when I saw the clip, someone sent me the clip, and I was, it's like... It the biggest grin on my face ever. And then it lit mine and I just, hmm. <laughs> but, but you know, it was just kind of how you just um, kind of controlled the pace of the game and you played it at your level as well. And you know, that's what lit mine used to do for like, Liverpool. Isn't it? So anyone out there, I'm a, I'm a Liverpool fan. <laughs> He's a Chelsea fan. <laughs> what? But, Look, you know, two? let's not. No, not saying Yeah, Chelsea. yeah. You know, let's not kind of talk about that right let's now. Let's not talk about that. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, that's kind of how like you was on my radar and then, yeah, I think you DM, was it you DM me or something? Yeah, obviously to say, fa- yeah, no, yes, I think, yeah, I, yeah, no, yeah. I, no, so I, I knew who you, I didn't know who you was, never knew the face to the profile mm. of the Twitter and stuff. Always used to see you comment on, um, under the Spartans videos, um, always positive. Um, obviously got a lot of time for that. Um, and I think when, when someone sent me the clip, um, or it might've been on Twitter, someone might've retweeted, I can't remember, it was, was talking a long yeah, time ago. Yeah. And I think I just replied yeah, back yeah, saying, yeah. thank you, Rare. And I think it just kicked off from yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Then I started watching a bit more of who you actually were. Um, and yeah, yeah, that was, yeah, that, that, that was it, man. And then um, we like did like the podcast. We did the audio podcast first. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. About Spartans. About yes. Spartans. Still got that on SoundCloud now. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then initially, even even when we were talking then, I'm like, bro, like, like, you are uh, like, you know, like a very deep and influential human being. Because again, like people can just look at someone playing like football and actually just think that, like, I'm just going to pigeonhole them into that box. Mm. People don't really kind of delve deep into why people play like football or yeah. like or like what football means to them, et cetera. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. in that conversation, like we kind of went really, really deep. And then literally that was when he was like, to Brees, man, you know, you, you kind of want to do something bigger which was uh yeah do you know what for the first part of it i thought you know what i think me and you was talking and i thought how sick would it be to just do something like because obviously we're in lockdown lots of thinking going on that's all we can really do in it do you know what i mean think plan and look, there was positives that come out of lock out of lockdown um it helped me do a lot of things but um i thought you know what why don't i get to breeze to um a follow me round in like a day of like a non-league footballer. And then I thought, nah, I think we can do something bigger than that. And um, in the job I do now, um, obviously I'm like a mentor and and, and gangs uh, gangs coordinator for the, for, um, you know, people referral unit. And I'm all about helping people um, and, and trying to, you know, pick the strengths out of these out of these these young boys and girls who you know are going off the radar and it's just like you know how can I help you and um, I always used to get asked the questions when I first started at this when I first started at this PRU they used to say oh you're a police officer you're a police officer look at you you like you got shirt and all and um it was funny man I used to look at these and think you don't even know what I've been through um and I would sit down with some of my young people and they would ask like you know where, where am I from and I, I I saw that opening up, not too much. Yeah, there's not, we don't have to talk about everything. Um, but I, I, I thought if I open up a bit, it might help someone. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, someone that they can relate to because they've been kicked out of mainstream school. They've kind of been, they've kind of given up on their education. Um, so it's about coming to, to, to people like me and just, you know, building a good relationship uh, and stuff like that. So I thought, you know what? Let me, let me, let me, let me do something. 
let, let me let me tell my story and um well tell parts of my story not everything's for the camera yeah, right. do you know what i mean um but i want to i want to show these kids that i've been like some of you and i've come out the other side do you know what i mean yeah. Don't let anybody tell you that it's over. When you get kicked out of mainstream school, don't let any of them teachers try to tell you, oh, you're going to go to a PRU and mm. it's like this, there, it's like that. You're not going to do nothing with your... Shut up, man. Stop being silly. Mm. You can do whatever you want to do. Yeah, I, I wasn't... I wasn't... Um, uh, academically, I wasn't I wasn't smart. Um, but I wasn't silly at the same, same time. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I wasn't silly... And um, it's about telling telling these youths, like, look, you lot have got so much going on for you. You can't even see it. So it's, people, it's for people like me to tell you, look, this is what you can do. This is what you can Go and do this. Go and do that. Do you know what I mean? And um, it was just showing them, like, okay, look at my life. Yeah, look at where I've been. It's no lies. It's facts. Ask anyone. And look where I am now. Yeah? Um, you can do the same. You can do better. Do you know what I mean? Don't let the silly. And sometimes you have to tell. Sometimes you have to let some of the young people just get on with it because we was all young once. Right. You got to let them. They're gonna do stuff. They're gonna go out party yeah. and they're gonna get with different partners mm. and blah blah blah. And you can only advise them. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah, going back to that whole thing, it was just like okay, let's create something. Let's create a nice documentary. Let's create this, and let's show people that you can go from rock bottom to there. And um. Then that's when you came in. I thought, you know what? Looking, I was looking at your your podcast and and the relationship we built, and I thought, this is the man. This is the man I can do this with. He ain't gonna judge me. He's gonna. He, he's got a heart of gold, and the main thing is he listens. He can hear me, and lots of people they they can't hear you. I'm not talking physically hear you. Like yeah, you know what I mean. Hear me. What, what I'm what I'm saying, what I'm what I'm trying to create, and um, I think there was a there was a time where I had, I sent you a long voice note. I never I'll never forget. I was in the back of the car. We was going out somewhere with the family, and I sent you a long voice note, and then you came back to me with um, with a voice note as well, and you was like, "Let's do this, let's do that," and I was just like, "Yeah, this guy's cold. This guy, is, he is telling me things that I've got in my head I ain't even said. That's why I was, that's when I thought, yeah, this is the man." This is the man. For when someone can create something like that in his head without me even giving you that info, you just have to just go, yeah, this is the guy. That, you know what I mean? And um, yeah, bro, we created uh, something elite, man. And we'll and, and we'll we'll get onto that into in, into on a, a another time. Um, but yeah, man. Uh, amazing it was literally just i wanted to create i wanted to tell my story i wanted to 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 tell people that uh, from when you probably knew me and i was probably doing the wrongs i'm telling you now that my life's sailed mm. i'm doing so well now do you know what i mean and when that came out I had young people at my at, at the pru watching i saw i didn't know you was like that and they latched on to me even more, built better relationships. They started trusting me more. Do you know what I mean? And um, sometimes you just got to open up your book sometimes for someone to just go, you know what? I'm all right, you know, I'm all right. I'm not alone. And again, thank you for allowing me to just share just some of your story. And again, nothing was scripted. Like the plan was for- Nothing was scripted, <laughs> Nothing was bro. scripted. Nothing. And literally, how I was thinking about it. I thought I'd be following you and then, because like we could have met was it maybe a week before or something, you know, again. Yeah, again, yeah just, just, to, uh, just to have a feel of yeah, everything. Yeah, I'm saying. yeah, just to show you where we was going to yeah. go. Like just that, to yeah. try and eliminate time for yeah, next yeah, time yeah, we yeah. shot, do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then she, I remember you saying to Brees, you've got to be with me. I'm like, what do you mean? Like, yeah, I am here. He says, no, like, you've got to be here, like, da da da. I'm like, bro, like I've I've not done like like being with someone and talking while I'm there. Like I'm always mm. being behind the camera. Yeah. And I remember going home, I was thinking, I was feeling mad nervous because that's again, <laughs> that's the first time I've been in front of camera. Yeah. 
Yeah, same. You know what I mean? Same. And yeah, it just works, bro. Like it was just, every, I like remember when we was um, in your kind of mum's castle and we was, and she, we were like in your room and when he was talking about mm. like the um, the hat trick ball yeah. and, and your brother and like it was me, mm. you and Kevin were there. Mm. And then filming and then when we stopped, can remember when we stopped? Yeah, and yeah. Everyone just looked at each other like. Yeah, it's giving me goosebumps now. You're thinking about, I remember I, that, I never forget. I'll never forget their moments, man. It was mad. Yeah. It was mad. It was mad. Real life. It's real life, bro. Yeah. It's real yeah. life, man. And, um... and, and you know what? What you said, like in terms of how people and and like the kids that you work with trust you because you opened up. How important do you think now as, as like older men now mm -hmm. to kind of open up to, to the younger generation, um, not not just about our problems or like our kind of low light points, but also about our, our like high points because sometimes like we don't even celebrate mm -hmm. our kind of um, achievements. Mm -hmm. How important is it now to, yeah, to open up? Look, gr growing up, when we was growing up to how they're growing up now is completely different, completely different. Social media is so much powerful, um, you know, gadgets, um, they live in a complete different life to what we was. We, in I'm not saying they don't enjoy their childhood, but I'm telling you, a lot of this generation is in it's, it's negative. It's negative. We grew up on being able to play out safe. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Go and play run outs, mm. water fights. Yeah, yeah. Family had H hide and seek. What? Hide and seek. Go into the shop, climbing. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And we was all safe. And um, and I said that, I, I, I spoke about it in in uh, the documentary and, you know, where my mum could see me outside and other people's mums would look out for everyone else. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? That's what it, it was. Childhood and, and growing up then was was amazing. And I sometimes I speak to the kids at school and I'm like, and they laugh at like, what, you was running around hiding? And, and I'm listen. If I could show you what it was like and, and put you in there, I'm telling you, you would come back out of that zone and be like, wow. Um, but their generation's scary. Mm. It's very scary, bro. Very scary. And um, all because what I see uh, as, my, as my job, not even just that, I see it on a daily basis. Um, social media, you know, everything's phones these days, everything's phones, you know, uh, everything's being recorded. Um, and I feel like, you know, the younger generation, there's a lot of pressure on them as well. There's a lot of pressure and it's things like, they all feel like they've got to have the latest trainers. Mm -hmm. They've all feel like they've got to have the latest um, clothes, man bags. He's got the, the the nicest haircut. It wasn't like that back then. It wasn't, was it? It wasn't like that. Who's got the most followers? Mm. Who's got the most likes? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. You see? Yeah, yeah. The pressure on the on the younger generation, um, they, they're all competing with one another secretly. The girls, they're, they're under pressure. Um, and it's sad, man. It's sad because they need to live their childhood because mm. they don't, obviously don't know what it's like to, to be a grown-up, do they? paying bills, the stress, then when you create create a family, you know, you're looking after human beings that you need to take care of, mm. you know? I just feel like they're not enjoying their, their their childhood. I mean, obviously there are some out there, but I'm talking the, the, the majority of the, gener the younger generation out here and um, a lot of them can't trust uh, people. There's nothing for them to do. Mm. Where's all the youth clubs? Where are they? They they're all shutting down. Yeah. Youth clubs, youth clubs are going. Sure. Um, there's only a handful out there, really, a handful, and um, that's why I always respect Connie's community. Um, they are a charity run um, youth clubs, uh, and they've they've done a lot for me. The the guy who, one of the guys who work there, George Turner, he's he's amazing, man. For the community, they put on boxing sessions. They do loads of stuff, loads of stuff. Um, 
and they're amazing but I can't think of nothing else in, in the end where I grew up mm. I mean my school put on a youth club and it's nice to see our, our, our young people come back after school and do something positive I probably can count on one hand youth clubs so what is there for them to do bro mm. there's not a lot you know there's not and I know I know a lot of them are making bad decisions um, you know knife crimes that is mm. highest of I mean like again like we've with like certain, with like certain things that we're we're like talking about now in terms of how like we like grew up and, and again, n I was even gonna even talk about knife crime and like you and so you've like got a beautiful family. Thank you. Everything that you're, everything that you've said in terms of, there's nothing for the youth to do and, but also as well with your family, there's no way that you would even let know your kids out of your sight. I I, I am I'm. Do you want me to be honest with you, T? <laughs> Do you want me to be honest bro? with you, bruv? I am very worried for my children, bro. I am very worried for them when they grow up. First of all, I'm an overthinker myself. Yeah, I drive myself mad. If you could put me in... Do you know who I am? I'm the guy from Taken. <laughs> What's his name? Um, uh, Lee, Liam... Liam Nielsen. Nielsen, something like that. Yeah, I'm yeah. him, bro. That's, that's who I am. I'm him. If my partner walks to her mum's in the buggy and the kids, you text me when you get there. If you don't text me within 10 minutes, I'm freaking out. This is the sort of person I am. However, <laughs> however, <laughs> I can't scaffold my kids too much. Do you know what I mean? I can't, ra I can't wrap them up in mm. cotton wool. Like, you know, little things now, like my five-year-old and my two-year-old, they play fight and he might rough up my two-year-old i'm like you know what i need it's cool just just yeah, sit yeah, just, don't just don't be grabbing him around mm -hmm. the neck yeah don't be dashing him yeah. throwing him on anything hard play fight cool. I, yeah i'm happy yeah, yeah, for happy. you to do that you're happy you know what i mean i want you to you need to be a little bit streetwise yeah, team. Right. you have to, i'm not saying if you're not streetwise you're gonna fail you're not but i want them to have a little bit of me in mm. but then i want them to be them themselves um but yeah, I'm quite worried for my children as they get older, man. Luckily, right now, I live in a nice... I live in a nice area right bro, now. Bro, it's not um, luck, bro. Come on, lad. I, I live in a nice area. You've it's been working to hard, bro. It's Come totally on. different to, to where I grew up, and I love where I, love where I grew, uh, grew up. Love it. Um, and would I move back there if I could? Yeah, I would. Yeah, I would, because it's, where, it's, it's me. It's where I was, mm. where I was built. But I'm very lucky now. I've got very nice neighbours. I'm the type. Look, I'm the type where I can like leave my door open. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, there was a time where I fell asleep. We fell asleep one time. I left the door on the latch. We slept the whole night with the, la the door on the latch. I woke up to we went to work. I was like, "Why is the door open?" You know, like little little things like yeah, that. Yeah, I'm not yeah. saying in that area someone's gonna come through your house. Mm -hmm. And no scary film. But yeah, I'm quite fortunate right now. I live in a nice area. She's very close to her mum. Uh, walking distance. I've got everything around me. But um, yeah, I'm, I am. Grow, my kids grow up luckily they're, they're not as old right now five two and um 10 months there's 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 still time yeah um he's not gonna go out by his own by six years old is he uh but yeah i'm a bit worried for them when they get secondary school because mm. i know what i'm like and do you know what it is because i work in this i work in the school now and i've seen what the young people are like mm -hmm. and i just see what young people are like in general as well um, yeah, man, I'm a bit, I'm a bit worried, but it's life. One word that you kept on saying, which I had to keep stopping you. Look, lucky, bro. It's not luck that you're here. Like some parts. No, 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 some no. Some parts. Like, I can always say that you, I don't know, if, even if I believe in the saying that you make your own luck, but like you've, but you've got to be uh, in, a, in a certain way mm. to know what's what's over the fence that's yeah. over the wall yeah, so yeah you know what i'm saying like mm -hmm. bro you like you're not lucky like you are here for a reason you know what i mean yeah uh, yeah and i'll give you saying uh, do you know what it is i'm i'm lucky i met my um my partner i'm very lucky that's a, I'm, i feel like i'm very lucky i met her how do you two meet instagram <laughs> instagram oh, no. So, so, we, so, so, so we talk about we, we talk, talk about, about we talk about social media yeah. yeah but it does have it, it has, has its has its goods um we met on social media, man, okay. and you know the you know you just you followed each other, you start liking each yeah. other. She's gonna kill me for this as well. Say no more. No, no, no. I'm gonna I'm gonna throw a shit <laughs> on that. And she, I remember. I think she direct messaged me one time saying, "What? You're just gonna keep liking my pictures or something?" I was like, "Raw." 
okay. Right, seven years later, man, three kids. Um, yeah, engaged. Got a bright future, man. Um, and she's, not going into too much detail, but um, there's a big part of me that's to do with her. When I met her, I was, uh, I was, I was in a low place. Um, you know, when I was training to be a bus driver, getting 250 pound a week, I was in, I was in debt. She was clearing my debt for me. Um, she's an amazing woman, bro. Amazing. I'm very, I'm, and I'm very lucky to have her. Again, she met, I met her at a point where I was very, um, what's the word? This is very unpredictable. I was very unpredictable. Um, felt like giving up on the buses. It's just two hundred fifty pound a week. It's a lot of money, but it's not. You know, mama, and I was paying. I had to pay her back, of course. Yes. She didn't want the money back, but I was, you know, no way. You know, I was working just to pay off debt. You know, what I mean, training to be a bus driver. I'm stressing. Cause I need to pass. I need a job. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, and she's, yeah, she's she's unbelievable, man. I can, unbelievable, bro. Wow, uh, I can see they getting really emotional. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She, she, cause she just lets me be me, T, and that's all I've ever wanted. Just to don't, cause I, I talk to my pals and I hear them at football, and then they just get stressed by their girls. Bet loads of my pals are getting stressed. Can't even go to football in peace. She don't give me no stress. She's the type of woman to go, you know what, today's your day off. I'm gonna take the kids out. You can come if you want, but why don't you relax? She's that woman. She's that type of woman. Do you know what I mean? Doesn't ask for nothing. Sometimes it jars me, like, tell me you want something. You know what I mean? Tell me what you <laughs> she's um she's very much she's very much like her her, her parents, very giving. Um they pour your drink before they pour theirs. Yeah, man. She's incredible. Incredible. And I can see that in my oldest son now. He is... And we all talk about... Now we all talk about our kids. He is unbelievable. But yesterday... He does loads of things, yeah. Loads of good things. But yesterday really touched me. We all did KFC. Coronation weekend and blah, blah, blah. Um, he finished his food... He went, who ordered this? I said, mommy ordered it. Thank you, mommy. I really appreciate it. Thank you, daddy. You know, like little things. He's five years old. Took him cinema the other week. And we don't, we, I, I, we haven't, I swear to God, I haven't even, we haven't even trained him like that to say, you know, you say thank you. I want him to kind of learn mm. and pick up on what we do because we're very, we're very grateful people. Say thank you. Even go to the shops, we get your, get your change. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Want him to pick up on them things. Went to cinema the other day. Came out of Super Mario's. Held my hand, looked up for me. Dad, thank you so much. That was the best day ever. I love you. Do you know that little things? Like, and I'm seeing that in in, in her. Um, seeing, 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 seeing her in him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, man. I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for, I stress, I stress a lot. I'm going to stress. I'm going to have my bad days, but um, yeah, I'm grateful for, for a lot in my life right now and what's coming as well. So let's talk about the reason why we started um, connecting football. Mm. So um, <laughs> where are you right now? So I say that again, T. So where are you right now? Like, like um, Football wise? Yeah, man. So I went back into, went back to semi-pro football, step six, um, at the start of this season, to 2000, or 20, 22, 23 season, um, linked up with uh, my old manager, Glenn Stevens, who I spoke about on the podcast, um, linked up with him again, Was made captain down at, at down, down at Cheserton. Um, was going really well. Brought in a lot of. It needed a, a, a good refurbish there. Uh, they, had, they had struggled the season before. I'd played about ten games towards the lot, end of the last season, twenty one twenty two season. 
and um, just to help out. Again, it's, it's, the kids is you know, too busy. Do you know what I mean? I got yeah. really busy, and um, yeah, but it was too late. We was winning games, but other teams around us was winning. So anyway, fresh new start. Brought a lot of boys in. I brought in about eight or nine players, um, and we started really well, man. It was it was going really well. They done up the whole club. The change rooms was amazing. It was like walking into a, a into a professional setup. I don't know if you've seen it. Like you've got your own, yeah, your, your own little, your, your, yeah, man. Little things like that, like they 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 mean a lot to me. I can't lie. Like I, I love things like when I go football. When I go football, I want to feel professional as, as much as I can. Yeah, facts. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I want to feel as, as good as 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 much as I can. So um, yeah, it was going really well. Started the season really well. We was flying, and then it uh, we lost our top striker to a really bad knee injury. Um, he was he was getting two or three goals a game. Um, and then uh, my youngest picked up a, an illness in October. He picked up um, bronchi bronchitis, bronchitis, whatever. I think they're both the same thing anyways. Basically, it's just a, it's a bad, it's a bad flu. He wasn't feeding. He was pushing everything back up and um, obviously getting really dehydrated, went to hospital, my other two had it as well when they were younger and they was admitted to hospital, came out the next day, fine, thinking it's going to be the same thing with him. Quite long story short, he was admitted into intensive care, had to go in intensive care. Yeah, which um, never in my life did I think I would see my 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 son go and lay on a, on a machine and the, and the machine do all the work for him. Um, obviously, he was put into... And induced coma so they could take the the pressure off of him basically the, the phlegm and stuff wasn't clear enough his chest it was so thick and he was only three months old four months old and um it was so thick nothing was clear and they was trying everything they, they've, they've got so much stuff they can do hospital they, it, nothing was working at all so um i don't know if you remember in covid they was turning people on their bellies and when they do that it's very serious when when they turn people on their on their on their bellies, it's very serious. You see in hospital, you're always on your back, right? Yeah. When you're on your stomach, it's a serious thing. Now they turned him on his front, and they was basically saying, if this doesn't work, like, do you know what I mean? Anyway, <clears throat> things were starting to work, and physios were coming around, and they're patting, you know, they're doing everything they can, and they work their magic. I I. I don't really remember too much of it. I was, I don't, I don't really want to get too emotional about it. Um, but yeah, it was, it was a crazy experience, man. I did, and my, my Victoria, she sat, she rid out the whole seven days with him. Obviously, I've got two other children, and we can't leave them with their nan and granddad. They, they, they need their, they need their parents. She didn't want to leave the hospital, so I was back and forth, and um. Yeah, there was a point where I thought I didn't think I was even going to see him again, man. So that scared me completely. Anyway, he made a, a, a good recovery. He's healthy now. He's a lovely little boy. He's growing up. And um, anyway, going back to that, it scared the life out of me. T. It was like I can't, I can't even function. Like this is this is crazy. Like the only thing I can do is go to work because I need to provide for my family. If I don't go, to, I don't even want to go to work. And this happened on. Luckily, this was on half term week half term week so I had a week to you know get myself together and um I thought nah I ain't going football no more there's no way I'm going football this, and we played in the Sussex uh, Sussex team Sussex league and every away game is like two and a half hours away like no I can't be away from my phone I, no can't do this can't do that I'm not playing football took a break tried to go back after you recovered after about four or six weeks I went I went back to one game um, and I sat on the bench, which I wanted to sit on the bench, yeah. by the way. Um, all I did was think about them. I thought, this ain't for me. Football is not for me. I can't do this. All I'm doing is worrying. He's absolutely fine, by the way. Mm -hmm. They're fine. But it's me. I'm, I'm away from my phone. Anything can happen. All, all I was, do you know, when the game, when the final whistle went, I ran back to the changing room to check my phone. And... Um, and I thought, you know what? I can't do this. This is going to make me unwell. This is going to put me back into a place where I was once before. I thought, nah, I've got to stop playing. I have to. I didn't want to. I was captain. I brought all my boys in. I'm back with Glyn. 
I didn't want to do it. But I thought, this is my family. My family come first. I have to do what's best right, right by my family. And um, yeah, I stopped playing. Then as time got on, um, went back to Spartans for a bit. I thought, let me try Spartans. It's a bit more different. It's only a couple of hours. You know, it's Sundays. Yeah, yeah, Sundays. It's, it's, it's local. And I love the boys, man. They're, they're, I grew up with some of them. Um, tried that. And it was like, yeah, okay, I can kind of do this. And then obviously got comfortable. Yeah, and I'm still playing for Spartans now. Um, but yeah, I've had to knock the, the semi-pro on the head. I can't, I can't commit. Um, I wasn't happy with a few things that happened at Cheshunt as well. Don't really want to get into that. Um, but yeah, that's that's where I'm at now, playing Sunday football, and um, I'm enjoying it again. I'm enjoying it, and when I'm playing now, I'm in my zone, mm. and I wasn't. When I was playing, all I was thinking about was my children. Was my son all right? Was any of the other kids going to get on well? This is the trauma. It, it, it messed me up. He just got on well, bro. Just got on well. All kids get on well daily. And I was just like, oh, what's going to happen next time he's unwell? So preparing myself next time he was unwell. You know what I mean? It was messing me up, but we're over that period. Thank God. And um, But yeah, I'm back to playing football and I, yeah, and I love it and I enjoy it, man. I'm back at Spartans. I love it. So what's the difference between Spartans, Croydon and Spartans, Orbiton and Bromley? Orbiton and Bromley is a lot more... A lot more physical, a lot more tougher. Um, the style of plays are different. Um, we, look, come on, man. In the Croydon, we took, we took the mick out of some teams in the Croydon. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. There were some good teams. We had Croydon JFC, mm -hmm. PSG. I like them. Even Sanderstead gave us a, a, a whooping one day. Um, but I mean, we was turning up. There was a couple couple teams that didn't even want to play us. I remember mm. the manager texting saying the games that they want to give us the points. Didn't it fancy it? That's not football, bro. That's not football, is it? You shouldn't even be a team. You shouldn't even be a you shouldn't even be a team if that's what's gonna happen. Yeah. Um but it's completely different. But however I've only played about four games in the Orpen League mm. and the games I've played in um have been have been physical but I like playing up against the fit that's the sort of player I am. I want to play against the the the, be the best the better players. Mm. I don't want to turn up and it just be a walk in the park. What's the point? Mm. Um, I can go and do that with, with my pals. But the diff... Oh, and the difference is, as well is uh, the the officials in, in the Open League, they're highlighting us. They're on to us. Really? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, they know. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... They... But, we, but we, the only one I can pick him up is that uh, John. I don't know his second name. You know the John, the referee. You do know him, man. 100% you do know him. <laughs> Yeah, what's his second name? <laughs> I don't know. You do know the ref John ref and he does sack with the leagues as well, I think. You do that one hundred percent know him. I'll find him once we stop yeah. we stop um we do this. But he, he we had him we had him yesterday. Um he lets the game flow. He likes the physical side of it. Fair play to him. But other officials, yeah, they're on to us. As in onto as in. we haven't helped ourselves. <laughs> we haven't we haven't helped ourselves. Well, well, However, we are men. We are humans. We are going to get frustrated. Yeah, this is a game of football. But so I've seen some officials just not even acknowledge that. And they're quick to... Because, like, there was a conversation before we started filming about, mm -hmm. oh, okay, Spartans, like, like, they... You guys know how to protect yourself. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then... Yeah, we're not... Yeah. yeah you're not going to let anyone just... Nah, no, no way. Spartans. <laughs> <laughs> There's a reason why that you call Spartans. Right. And uh, when... when we're not no Muppets. Um, we, we can play football. A yeah. lot of people say you're a physical side. Rah, rah, rah. We can play football. We don't help ourselves again sometimes because we like to argue amongst ourselves. Mm -hmm. We like to blame others. Mm -hmm. um, but when we do get down and play, I'm telling you, man, we can, we're, we're unplayable, man. We're unplayable. Uh, and we're just having a problem at the minute with no keeper. Our keeper got injured. We've had a player go and go, uh, and it's affected us. People might not see it; they probably don't care. But it's facts. Mm -hmm. um, would we have won every game with a keeper? No, but it would have been a big difference. Um, we probably wouldn't have lost yesterday if we had a keeper. The goals were the basic goals. What keeper should be saving? Who's the best team that you've that's in the Opton and Bromley league right now? Uh, so I've only played up. So I've only played 
Bickley twice, mm -hmm. Kenningwell, um, Elmstead. I'm trying to think who else is in there. I put Farnborough in there, but I played Farnborough last year. They were good. Okay. The Bickley were Bickley were an uh, interesting team, man. Mm. Uh, very fi very physical like us. Weren't, weren't scared to get into a bit of a um, into a battle. They, are, are they technically a very good? No, I didn't think they were. But sometimes you don't need all you don't need that to be a good team. They work hard. Um, they're very well organized. They know their game plan. Their game plan is to get the ball to the stronger players, the boys, the boys who are going to create the magic. And over the two games that they beat us, that's exactly what they did. Um, they worked hard in the middle of the park. They knew our strengths and what we could do. So you know we're very good down down the down the sides. They knew to double up. Um, they knew what they was doing. But anyway, I think Kenningwell. Between Bickley and Kennywell, Kennywell yesterday, they're a good team. They got some good players, man. Mm. They got some good players. Mm. Um, but again, I've only have I've only played a few teams in the league and Lambeth dropped out. Yeah. Um It's a good league, man. It's yeah. a good league. It's definitely worth getting up for. Not saying Croydon wasn't. I enjoyed Croydon League. I didn't enjoy, but I didn't enjoy the part where uh teams were pulling out. Yeah. And sometimes uh refs wasn't. And it, and another good thing as well. Is you get three officials with the yeah, yeah. Open oh, League, oh, yeah, which is yeah. so helpful because uh, the manager was doing the line sometimes, and you can't have the manager do that. No. Um, so there's a big difference in the Croydon and the Open League. And the Open League, I feel like they really take charge and they really look after the league um, and the teams. And like we was using Croydon's ground as a home ground, and then that, that got taken up because obviously the season had finished, and then they gave us. I think they found us a home ground. You know, like little things like that are nice. Like they could have said, no, you have to go and find a home ground now. I think they found it for us. And it's a, it's a nice little home ground now. Okay. What's the one thing you would change about Sunday League football? The pitches, the facilities. Um, and I think it, des it, it, it deserves a lot more heart. Um, where do all players start? Sunday league or amateur you know what I mean well the percentage is very yeah. high a lot of kids they don't just go straight into academy mm -hmm. they go from the park don't they mm -hmm. or they might go for, I don't know from one to one sessions to, but it's like the percentage is very very high isn't mm -hmm. it and I just don't think there's a not there's not enough effort put into into Sunday they don't care I've turned up to some pitches and it's, do you think players should be putting up their own nets that's embarrassing bro <laughs> That is embarrassing. Have you seen Pearly Way? Bro, you know, I was I was even gonna talk about Pearly Way. But it's like I, that. It's like this. No, it, bro, it's 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 like this. That's not worth ten pounds, bro. Pearly Way, I'll well, listen, you know what? It's good to have pictures like well. Haven't even got change rooms. Or if they have, it's like a bush tooker trial over there, bro. I don't ever want to go in there. That's the borough Croydon Croydon, Croydon Council. Like whoever's please, like whoever can can get to someone from Croydon Council, yeah? Those pitches have not changed for for decades. I played on Pearly Way pitches when I played for, sorry, Wonder Wanderers when I was under 12s. I'm now 33 years it's old. Ridiculous. There's, there's, what, what's changed? It's not good enough. It's man. not good enough. There's, do you know how much injuries come from I, bad I pitches? Know, I know. Do you know how much? Um, one, of our, one of our players... Um, Schema picked up an injury against um, Saha a couple of years ago, all to do with the pitch at Coney Hall. No one even touched him. Rolled his ankle. In um, I know that can happen anywhere, but that uh, that was the pitch. Injuries happen on the pitches all the time, and it's not good enough, man. It's not good enough at all. But again, that was the positive from the Open League. I feel like they look after. The, the, we played at a university last week against Bickley. Unbelievable. Better than some semi-pro pitches. Showers after. A bar where you can go and get a drink. Mm. Little things, man. Mm. Little things. And there's so much money out there. The FA have got... So, there's mo there's money everywhere. Everywhere. They don't want to put... They don't, they don't care. They don't want to pump it into Sundays. For what? Why do they want to pump it into Sundays? They don't want to do that. But it's, but it's something that what you said at the beginning of our conversations, like where's the facilities for young 
kids, girls and boys to, to actually go play football, go and like play in the cage. Like You need to attract these young people into, do you know what I mean? Like you need to, lots of kids probably see that and they never want to turn up. It's like, what's this? You know what I mean? Mm. It's got to look the part, man, yeah. as well, man. Yeah, 100%. 100%. Uh, who knows, but we've been talking about Sunday <laughs> for a long time. Nothing can, nothing can't change, but we all still enjoy it. Yeah. We all still enjoy it. Will it ever change? Uh, let's hope, mate. But I don't doubt I'll see it in my lifetime. So you uh, spoke about looking good. Let's talk about your football boot collection. Mm. You like you do have a list. Yeah. Like, like for you, what makes the perfect football boot? First of all, I love footwear anyway. <laughs> I love footwear. So my trainers and and I always say you can tell a lot about someone by their by their footwear. Um, doesn't doesn't that, looking all right, doesn't though. mean to say because I've seen some players turn up on the side and they've got some beat down boots and they go out and create some magic. Yeah. Um, but I've always been into footwear and. Football boots. The, the, the missus goes crazy, bro. Why you got with them boots? You don't even play. <laughs> She's right. I yeah, know. Um, but I can't help it. Um, but football boots. But I've got boots from years ago. And because I don't wear my boots, to, so what I do is I normally wear um, the same pair of boots for one or two games. And then I'll put them away. It's like a little uh, cycle. So they'll go back mm -hmm. to the queue. Yeah. Then the next one. Yeah. Well, it depends on what mood I'm feeling. Mm -hmm. I might watch, I don't, might watch a player on, on match of the day and go like, you know what? I'm going to stick them on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's again, it's just looking after my, looking mm -hmm. after you my just, stuff, bro. Yeah. I look after my, I look after my things. Like I said, I've got, I've got boots in the shed from, I was looking at, uh, a couple of days ago. Uh, I was the oldest pair of boots in there nine years ago. And they're still playable now. Um, I got boots in there that ain't even been worn. Um, but the the lot I was having this discussion yesterday. I wore the Adidas Accelerators from back in the day. You know the the original Adidas Predators Accelerators. Mm -hmm. So they they were the first boots I ever wore at under ten. And I was the boys were saying to me yesterday, "Why are you wearing them? You're crazy. You could sell them. Yeah. Like someone offered me a thousand pound for them." They're the blue and the blue and white and the luminous green predators. I should have brought them with me. Um, I, 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 wore, I said to them yesterday, they were, these were the first boots I wore. These are going to be the last boots I wear. And um, yeah, but football boots. I love my boots, man. I love them. I, I look in the shed the other day, I'm not even going to wear all these boots. What can I do with these? The, the kids, when they get older, they're not going to want to wear these. These are going to be some <laughs> dead boots once they get older. And always, I've gave loads of boots away and I've, I've had untold boots, bruv. Untold boots. I've gave boots away to all sorts of people. I've donated to charity. I gave a few to my pal who sent loads who sent loads of boots off to uh, to Nigeria, uh, to Bangladesh. I did that about five or six years ago. Um, yeah, I've, I've, I, love, I love giving things away, but I've got my little collection now. Um, yeah, football boots, a oh, little one. <laughs> Wear them in my house if I'm. <laughs> if you had like, like astral turf, you. Yeah. Once I get in the house in the garden, I'll just every time I go in the garden, I'll just put my boots on. <laughs> Imagine that. Imagine that. Um, what's the best piece of advice someone has ever um, told you? There's been quite a few. Uh, You know what? There's a guy, one of my guys, he used to be my old um, Sunday manager, a guy called Sean, did a lot for me, man. Did a lot for me when I was at a, t when I was at a point in my life, it, just after my brother died, when I was in my, at my lowest, helped me a lot. Um, he, he's always guided me throughout. He's like a mentor to me. Um, and he always sends me nice messages now about how proud of, how proud of, um, how proud he is of me and he always says to me, you know what, just just be yourself. Just just be yourself <laughs> um, and you'll figure out who's who's gonna, like who's there for you and who's not at the times. Um where you like where you need them rare, rare. Yeah. He, he just I think just be yourself. And it's so true, man. Just be yourself. I used to worry about some things I would do. Just worry about but 
you could go and feed a billion kids, starving kids. Someone would tell you you've done it wrong. Yeah, facts. It doesn't matter what you do to you in life. Someone is going to judge you. Someone's going to look, come, comment and hear, say, I'm talking rubbish. <laughs> Bad, There's going to be people coming in and say, I'm doing, it's, it's a great, it's a, it, do you know what I mean? Whatever you do in life, people are going to comment. And you know what? That's fine. It's not a problem. I think the best, I've been given a lot of advice. Um, but yeah, big up my guy, Sean, man. Um, he's someone I can always, I'll always look to. I'd always look through messages from previous, what he sent me, and it's a little and, and he started off he started off tough as well. He started off um similar to a lot of us, man. Didn't really have too much growing up, and he's very successful now. Very successful. And another bit of advice he used to give me as well. I was always one that used to spend money on silly things like I'd spend like ten pounds a day at work on lunch. And uh, I remember him saying to me, Start taking food from home, man. Start doing different things. Start controlling your money a lot better. And um, I started doing it and I started to see the difference. You know what I mean? Even though I'm one of them people, you, know, you live life once, bro. I'm just gonna spend. Bro. If I want something, I'm going to go and get something. But it was only till I really had my children. I was like, you need, you got to be a bit sensible. And yeah, he used to, he used, some of the things you say would be so true. Like, don't go spend ten pound a day. Go and spend thirty pound, and go and get your lunch for a week. You know what I mean? Yeah. You ten pound a day. That's fifty pounds, mm -hmm. Monday to Friday. Thanks. Go spend. Go save yourself twenty pound. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And boy, that's why he's maybe he's so successful now. And um, I looked at him all the time, and I see his pictures and his house he's living in, and it, yeah, incredible, bro. Incredible. And um, one thing. I can kind of definitely, definitely say is that you are definitely yourself. Like <laughs> on your socials, you make me laugh. And and actually, what I've and again, like I, I kind of, you know, look at people and I say, okay, you know, what, they, they like know how to have fun, and it's those people who are the most serious people off socials or with their families and with their friends because you how like you can. <laughs> when you're doing your dancing yeah when everything bro well, I gotta watch it bare time it, it's well, just me man it's you it's just me it, bro it's you bro it's just it's me I, like, I might have some people on there like I've met like who don't really know me as well as some people do know me they might think this guy's just crazy well, that's you it's me and there was a time where it was years ago where I was making funny videos and I was getting loads of followers and I didn't really like the attention it was getting a bit too mad I didn't really like the 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 random followers, the random messages and the demands in from people. And I thought it kind of creeped me out. I was like, oh, no, I'm not trying to be no one. I'm just being myself, bro. So if you see me do something, I haven't planned it. Mm. I haven't thought like three days ago, I'm going to go and do this on Sunday. Everyone knows Sunday, if I'm not playing, it's my, it's my day. I, I love I love doing the housework. Yeah, It's my therapy. Yeah, I love it. I've got the music playing. Um, and I would just do something silly. Um, it, might, it might just come to my head to you. And I thought, you know what? That's fine. I'm going to do that. Again, bro. I'm just being me, bro. Just being me. Um, and yeah, I will, I will continue to be me. I don't want to grow up. I don't want to grow up, man. I, I'm I'm this silly, crazy person. And, you know, I make people laugh. And I do crazy things with the kids and stuff like that. And I don't take myself too serious. But you've also got a serious side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got, of you, course. Yeah. Yeah, of course. But I don't take myself too, too serious. Yeah. Um, life is about love, laughter, and just creating good memories, man. And that's all that I'm about. And I'll do whatever I can to make that possible for as long as possible. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So what's next for for Reese Jackson? There's a lot, man. Uh, since we obviously linked up from the podcast, you know, I always wanted to go on uh, something from the documentary. Um, I always wanted to go further with with things, and that's that thing. The documentary opened up different doors. Not did it only open different doors, but it gave me a lot of um, confidence to go and do different things, to try different things as well. So. 
you know, um, you know, there's, there's things that me and my partner, we've opened up a little sweet business, um, which is going really well. I've still got some of, you know, some of the, some of the businesses, like I've got like a little perfume business and that I do on the side and just trying to create and just trying to open as many doors as possible, um, for, for, for my, for ourselves, for my kids. Um, don't really like sitting down too much. Um, but the main thing is, is, you know, I've got a brand new podcast coming out called the Wireways Jacko podcast, which I am so excited about. Um, so yeah, I've, I've been watching different, ep- different people's podcasts over the last, I'll say year and a half, two years, seeing where, seeing what I could do different, um, learning off different people. And, um, yeah, I want to just try something new and hopefully I bring some good content to people and, um, bring something different. That's the next step, which is happening as we speak right now. Love that. Love that. Reese, um, I just want to say, um, I blame you for me <laughs> being right here because again, like, as, as I said before, I never thought I'd be in front of camera and like just being, be like part of your documentary and just allowing me just to be there. Mm. Like I was like, even to myself, I'm like, wow, like I could, I could do this in front of camera. Mm-hmm. So I have to blame you the reason why I'm here as well. So honestly. You're a natural man. Um, lots of people talk about the documentary and a lot of people talk about you in it, man. Guys, this guy's sick. He's very comfortable. He's, he's he's not jumping in when he's you know what I mean. He's very good at what he does. Um, and a lot of people didn't believe that it was your first time actually doing it on the other side of the camera. And when I watch it back now, still obviously there's a few things that I could possibly change about myself. But look, it's the first time ever doing something like that. We didn't want to really. We didn't want to scrap something and do it again it's a learning curve it's a learning curve do you know what i mean as much as sometimes i watch it and go oh why did i why did i didn't say anything that i shouldn't have i just might have repeated myself or something like you know like something small it's only something small but then i think to myself no we was just being ourselves we hit the record button let's go you know what i mean a lot of people probably won't ever believe that they must have thought it was six seven eight nine yeah, takes, takes. Mm-hmm. What did we do that in? An hour and a half? I think we we've done two two hours. Two hours. And that was link that was linking up. Yeah. Having a chat at the yeah. start. Stopped filming. Stopped filming. Having and another having yeah. a little chat. Yeah, man. You're a natural, brother. And um, I feel like we could uh, in the near future we could create something even better, man. Even better. And thank you again. Guys, please like share subscribe do do all of the great stuff and uh reese's podcast is going to be in this description so guys thank you so much for watching reese again thank you thank you so much thank you again my brother don't leave me hanging oh sorry apologies apologies thank you brother guys we are out we are out